guys, welcome back to the garage. In this uh, short video, I'm going to go over the replacement motor for the Emco PC5. Uh, the replacement motor uh, came from uh, TVT America. Um, it's an Italian made motor. It's three phase, inverter duty, half horsepower. The original, uh, in fact, here it is, the original Emco motor is uh, 0.4 horsepower, 3200 RPM, 115 volt, and uh, here's the new motor. They're very similar. The mounting faces are, uh, this thing's a direct bolt in. Um, the only thing I'll do is I'll turn the motor compartment, terminal compartment cover around so that the cable exits out the way I want it to exit out. but. Uh, this is a three-phase motor. Um, it's approved for uh, VFD use and will give you uh, control from CNC 12 uh, to control the spindle speed. So let's go ahead and get it bolted up. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's pretty much a direct bolt-in right down to reusing the original pulley. So I'm going to take the pulley off the original motor. There's a straight screw on the end of it and even the motor shaft links are the same the boss is the same, the bolt circle is the same, and even the screws are the same the uh, keyway is the same, so drops right on okay one difference is the original motor screw is an M5 and the new motor is an M4 which is no big deal so I'm going to go ahead and Put a little bit of Loctite blue on the screw. Okay, so that's that. Grab the original motor mount screws from the old motor And we'll set the old motor aside. And let's go ahead and get the new motor installed. Oh, by the way, on this motor, uh, it's uh, TN63C-235. Um, I've given the part, part number and the source for this motor from TVT America on the Centroid user's forum. this so the screws are showing correctly. Okay, I've got everything started. I need to pull the encoder off, encoder belt off, so I can get the main belt on. And we're going to use the middle pulley. Alright, so now I want to make sure I'm happy with my motor placement in the bracket before I snug it all down. I can see that I am getting a little interference from I'm getting a little interference from the uh, terminal compartment. I should have pulled the cover off. You get that off. The cable strain relief is hitting the uh, the headstock. I should have pulled the cart compartment off first.
There is a bit of paperwork inside the terminal compartment. I'm going to keep that together. Now, we should be able to get things done right here. So I want to get the uh, motor mount screws aligned where I like them. Tighten them up. Those won't have to move anymore. Now we'll adjust the tension bolt. Too loose. Feels pretty good. This little nut over here. There's a nut over here that also needs to be tightened up. It's a 13 millimeter wrench on this pivot nut. Snug it. Check the belt. Didn't feel too bad. Yeah, I like that. This is the cable that, I'm, that I bought from AutomationDirect.com. It's called VFD cable. And there's the part number. And let me show you why I use this cable. Gently score in the jacket, but underneath this jacket is a braided shield. And as long as I've used this cable, I've really not had any problems with EMI. And there it is, it's a braided shield. I can pull it back and then there's still another shield. And there are the conductors. So what I will do is I will pick the shield apart all the way back. I'll take my time and using a pick takes a little bit of time but don't get don't get uh, don't get in a hurry. You'll spend more time and frustration on the other side if you don't do things right. See there? Okay, you get an idea. I'm gonna pull this all the way back and then I'll turn the braid into a wire. Okay, I've got the braid back and I've got it uh, wound up into a, a conductor. You'll see there is a drain wire here. I'm going to take the drain wire, the shield, and the ground, and they're going to be put together. And they're going to be bonded to the motor. Now the bad thing about this motor, inside the terminal compartment there is no place to put a ground wire, which boggles my mind. So I'm going to have to snake this wire out of the terminal compartment and put it on top of one of the, the uh, terminal compartment cover screws to bond the motor. Um, the terminal compartment is cast aluminum, so it'll be fine. The other issue is these, uh, I mean, this cable's pretty good size, and you know, uh, I think all they sell is uh, 16, is the smallest, so you could actually get by with uh, an 18 gauge VFD cable. But no matter, it's what we got, it's what we're going to use. But I'm going to take the, the braid, the drain wire, and the ground, and I'm going to tie them together. And they're going to come. I may splice them inside the terminal compartment, and then just bring one wire out to the, uh, to the outside um, to uh, bond that motor. Um, the other thing is, this motor comes pre wired 440. So here's a picture of it as it is as it comes from the factory and then sitting right next to it is the little slip of paper that shows you the little motor taps. So uh, it comes pre-wired 440. I need to switch it over to 2, 220 and uh, so I'm going to do that now. And then here's a picture of the taps changed compared to the little wiring chart. Okay, I wanted to show you what I did to remedy 
this issue. This, this strain relief is too small to get that cable through. I don't know if you can see that. That's a really small opening in the cap. Um, so what I did is I drilled using a unibit to three quarters of an inch and then I used a half inch pipe tap to thread it and then I got a standard uh, strain relief fitting and I left the lock nut on it so that when I screwed it into the housing it just barely protrudes and then I took the lock nut and locked it to lock the fitting in place okay that's the only way I could figure to make this thing work what I'm going to use this strain relief for is I'm going to let the grounds come out here and then they're going to loop around and then they're going to get uh, with a connector I'm going to bond the motor right here through the cover that's the best I can do okay I put heat shrink around that drain wire the shield and the ground wire because they're going to be going across the top of the terminals inside that motor compartment I um, might forgotten how much of a pain this was but it's got to be done so anyway on to getting it motor wired up okay I wanted to show you the terminal compartment cover before I put it together there you can see the the ground wires going through the original strain relief connector and then the hot wires I've got little forks on them number 12's um, crimped to the wires and this is an absolute pain in the butt because and this I think this is how America does things a little better this cable goes in, a, in an American made motor goes right into a terminal compartment um, on the motor and then the cover just covers everything in this case it goes into the cover so you have to kind of fight this stuff to get it all tucked in as you're putting it down over the terminals on that motor so uh, I don't know if I'll be able to show you uh, me doing that but I used forks on purpose so I could get them between the nut and uh, the shorting bars on the motor. I'll try and get a picture of it and I'll post it here for you so you can see what it looks like before I cover it up. Make sure you leave yourself about six inches of wire long because this this little guy I almost this is the plan right here I almost didn't have enough wire but so it, the ground comes out and it's going to be bonding the motor just like that through the screw cover. Um, these motor these wires are no problem they can be somewhat short but they got to be long enough where you can get them in there and then still cover everything up but this one so leave yourself about six inches of slack on the end of the VFD cable okay okay I was able to get a little video before I covered this up but you can see the uh, three wires terminated onto the terminals and here it makes no difference which which one goes to where because you can reverse the uh, the wiring if the motor if the spindle is turning the wrong way you can just flip any two wires in the VFD so we're not going to concern ourselves as to which goes to which okay so I'm about ready to cover this up and uh, like I said it's really tight in there and you got to make sure everything's uh, nice and uh, neat as possible okay so the uh, motor cover went on very easily I didn't have to fight anything turns out there's plenty of depth in the motor cover so here's the original strain, strain relief that came with the motor and it's tightened down on the uh, the ground wire the shield and the braid and then they're all, all three of them are terminated underneath this uh, yellow uh, ring terminal and then that terminal is um, tightened and bonded to the motor case and then this is tightened up here's a shot of the motor and the encoder all wired up and uh, the motor mounted okay guys well, that concludes this uh, video again this was just basically getting the motor mounted and the motor wired up um, still have to wire the other end of the motor to the VFD and that will come a little bit later but uh, at least the motor's on. I just wanted to show you uh, how to install the uh, Italian made uh, motor onto the uh, Emco PC5 and get the jumpers changed on the motor so it'll run on 220 volts. And here's the little tap chart again so you have a, a good look at it. Again uh, we changed it from its 440 which is right here over to the 220 and then uh, the three phases got wired here. That's what these uh, letters denote down here at the bottom this is the power going into the motor and they get terminated here all right that's it guys uh, until next time i think uh, the next video will be doing a bench test of acorn talk to you soon